but she will be asked the First Nation to plan these facilities, to plan these facilities before they are created and start as properly correlated components of a single organization. And when you go, there I find out a, a very good, uh, I think it was a PhD uh, dissertation. In this historical event, the, the researcher, she, she is a professor uh, in Fundação Getúlio Vargas, a well-known institution, well respect. And she did uh, dig quite a lot of information, uh, official documents, uh, did interviews, uh, people who were still alive when she did, uh, people who were a part of this, uh, the whole process. Very, very good. It's, it's in Portuguese, but uh, it's available. And then if, you, if you read the whole recommendation, uh, of uh, uh, Richard Smith, you'll be astonished because he, he not only in this recommendation, but uh, uh, in the 1945, in 1945, he, he did a lecture in, uh, in Brazil. Um, and he said in this letter, Brazil is going to be one of the first, one of the powers in uh, aircraft industry. For Christ's sake, in a lot of basis he would say that. And it's true. Embraer is amongst the uh, uh, first rank industry, it's the, it's the fifth industry, aircraft industry in the world. In medium aircraft airplanes, he's the first. I mean, you know, nose to nose with Bombardier from Canada. Uh, the, the light aircraft, combat aircraft, I mean, is, is so, as far as I know, I mean, I'm not uh, specialized in this area, but uh, is regarded as very powerful and uh, accomplish the missions he was designed for. That's another, is uh, look around to see what would be our market niche, where we are going to focus our efforts. And from there on, we start to go. Now, Embraer produce a medium uh, aircraft, uh, prob probably who, who fly from here to Chicago or to Dallas. We fly one, Embra one of those latest Embraer uh, aircraft. It's the maximum will be, uh, if I think it's MB195. It uh, is for 115, 120 uh, passengers. So, but is, is, I think he, uh, Embraer is going to stick on that market level, a uh, market at uh, uh, share. It's not going to compete in large, this is, would be silly for her. It destroy completely the whole Air Force. So, um, my question, I remember, I, I, I ask you, what would be the possible connections to, to explain and to help us to understand the success of uh, uh, Embraer and agro-industrial sector? There is one link, it's a political one. Uh, political not in the sense of parties, but in the sense of uh, the true forces that try to uh, shape the country. And among those, there is this, uh, um, this doctrine, they call it the doctrine of national security. When you read it, and I read it, uh, although it has been inspired by, you have a, a college, national college of war, was set up also by, by the, middle of, uh, the middle to the end of Second World War. Almost the same time that ESG is a um, um, scholar's period de guerra, is war, school of war, uh, high, I would say superior, superior in the, in the meaning of uh, high, uh, high, 
uh, school of war, something like that. Uh, although it has been inspired by uh, American uh, National School of War, when you go in really through the whole set of uh, issues, organizations, etc., you see they they depart quite widely from 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 the, those uh, uh, idea, original idea, American original idea. Why? Because they were focused on the what is the meaning of national security. National security has a strong economy, occupy the country by Brazilians, have a good education, uh, and this part they didn't stand uh, well. I mean, the military, Brazilian military, I mean, but I think they, they have been changed and learned quite a lot from the last decades, and uh, have good uh, capability in science and technology. That was very clear for them. And uh, uh, the seed, the, the, the ideas that inspired those uh, doctrines came from the positivism and the realization uh, that uh, unless Brazil has a good industrial base, a strong economic, uh, uh, strong and sound economy, would it be possible for them to even survive as a country? See? So in, 19, in 1974, Embrapa was set up with the specific proposal of develop Brazilian industrial uh, agribusiness sector, ranging from science to deliver the result of uh, uh, R&D of technological uh, research to the producers it's themselves. It has to cover up from A to Z, and they did. And now, uh, um, okay, you, you could uh, go through uh, uh, the history of those institutions, of those uh, Embraer and Embrapa, and try to understand uh, how they, they work out this, this their mission, so to speak. Uh, it would be quite interesting, but this is, we don't have time, and uh, I didn't uh, also prepare, summarize the, the, all the, the data I have to, to present to you, which I do apologize. But the idea was just to explore with you, to share with you some of my uh, uh, questioning, some of my um, concern in understand how that was possible for Brazil, what was behind, what's the driving force beneath all these social and political movements. Um, because uh, from, from here on, uh, you, you, you have to uh, clear put these uh, actors, social actors, in the table, so to speak. Uh, in order to be able to organize any proposal uh, of, of action. That's why I said, uh, unless you take into account the social, economic, and political environment, uh, you could only be talking a very nice talk, very nice propositions, but you would be naive to the point that would have any uh, concrete consequence for the country itself. That, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry if it took so long. No, no. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for, for thank you. I thank your passion. Yeah. Uh, you have to make sure to announce your, your other talks. To, uh, I will be glad. I will be glad. I will be glad. And I would love to get a copy of your presentation. Sure. Put on our website. Sure, sure. If you give me just a couple of days just oh, to... Sure. For instance, this part I have with this, uh, this is, so at least to a few adjustments to make it more clear that then you could go from the beginning up to the end and at least try to see what question I'm trying to address to. Wonderful. Thank you again.
Thank you again. Thank you very much. I guess if either of you, if anyone has questions. Please. I have to start cleaning off a little bit. Please. Something that had never occurred to me before. Um, do you mean that the dictatura militar had actually also contributed something positive? Certainly. Ah, it had never occurred to me before. Well, Certainly. And then you speak along with what you said in the but they also think sort of as I accompany the evolution of meteorology in Brazil, that's my mm. field. In the, around 1980, they sent some of their best students to the United States to study. Mm -hmm. Mostly master's degree in electrical engineering, electronics mm. engineering, and then they started meteorology. And then from there on, the whole thing just developed. It's tremendous. There are now so many universities that have meteorology departments. Mm -hmm. On a subject here very often. And it's a country into which there's an influx of uh, professionals from other countries mm -hmm. that would barely need them themselves, but they go to instead to Brazil to work. And, and so many, so many things that never occurred to me. It was indeed during that time of the Military yes. Yes. I I, I I will tell you something that you you, I'm 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 sure you're going to be. Yeah. I, I, no. It's it's cool. That's why I'm trying to say, the Brazilian history, you could put the milit Brazilian military in the same basket. Remember, when they set up the 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 military group in 1964, there wasn't. A general uh, had uh, that uh, staying until the end of the military period. Pay attention, please. They they kept the the uh, the presidency period and elect new presidency. You say ah okay, but this was a, a gentleman agreement, so to speak. Yes, but what makes the damn difference? Because. There was a huge difference between uh, Castelo Branco was the first, um, Medici, Garrastazu Medici was the second, and more even uh, in uh, Geisel, Ernesto Geisel. That is so true that I'm going to tell something that you would be astonished. It is a well uh, understand even between the most leftist scholars, that you could mark three important periods uh, in the Republic, Brazilian Republic. Getulio Vargas, especially the second period where he came to power elect. Uh, Juscelino Kubitschek. And Geisel. Now, certainly, and I, I have no problem in saying that, you should also put Lula uh, in the fourth place, as in the, chronologically speaking. Yes, he, he, he did a very important thing. That's true. That's true. Although uh, Fernando Henrique Cardoso don't like too much because, uh, you know, he's a scholar, for Christ's sake, you know, I mean, scholar is bloody guy came from nowhere. He has very <laughs> divinity. <laughs> but he's a nice guy, Fernando Henrique. Anyway, and he did, he did important thing, I mean, for the government. So unless you understand this, you, you would be able to understand what is going on in Brazil and what is going on now in Petrobras. What is going to happen in Brazil with the pre-salt uh, pre uh, uh, discovered. Do you know, do you know that the, the majority, the, the largest uh, transnational firms are established R&G departments in Brazil right now, send the best guys to there to get the contracts from Petrobras and try to uh, develop a new technology to explore in, in, in deep, uh, yeah. You have a, a lot of research, scientific research, 
R&D, technological, etc., uh, microelectronics, nanotechnology, robotics, new materials, 